Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am here with the newfangled tool from Goldhog, the Boar Box. We're finally out in the field to give it one good test in a real life situation on the Fraser River where I know there's lots of fine gold. We're gonna see how well it does running the Boar Box. So, wish me luck and I hope you enjoy. Now this claim here has treated me quite well earlier this summer uh, where we were working way up high and I said I wanted to wait until the water went down to test down low to see if there's as much gold down here as we were finding up there. The floods of last year really brought in a lot of new gold. So I'm hoping there's a lot of new gold down here as well. So I'm going to just set up the bore box, you know, right there beside that big rock and work some of that material right there and see how well down lower on this bar will produce the gold. Up high, I was getting, you know, a gram a day easy panning. So let's see if this machine can do every bit as good as that, if not better. And yes, summer's finally over. Summer dragged on into the fall for a month or more than it normally would have. But finally, it's rainy, it's drizzly. I drove through snow to get here. Summer is now done. It is October 22nd and yes, fall has hit in force. Enough talking, let's get setting up. This is freaking hilarious. I was like 20 seconds from when I said it's time to get set it up. Uh, set it up? Set up. And I started moving rocks. And uh, as I'm moving rocks away, I saw something shiny on the ground. I moved a couple of big boulders, those ones right there, from right here, and something shone back at me and I had a quick look. Can you see that? Black sands all around and a flake of gold sitting right there. This could be good. I will definitely be getting the close up for this. Look at that. I've seen that before on this claim. I found a rock that was covered in flakes like that all over the surface of the rock. When I posted a picture of it, everyone said, Dan, you're lying. You're making that up. You put those there. Well, I kind of agree with them. You'd never see gold on the surface like this. Not on sands, not on gravels, not on rocks. You never see it. But for some reason, this claim every once in a while washes gold out on the surface. And I think it's because of the huge quantities of sand here that slowly gets stripped away. But there we go, my first piece of gold and I haven't even set up the machine yet. And my common line to people, if they think they see gold on the surface, I usually tell them it's mica. Mica is what forms or deposits on the surface, not gold. But I will guarantee that is a piece of gold. Hilarious. But let's get this machine set up and find a thousand more of those. And there we be. It took me about 10 minutes to set up the bore box on some recirculating tubs. Get it all plugged in and ran it for just a few seconds, tipped through a couple scoops through just to make sure everything was running properly. And we're ready to go. We're ready to start shoveling that gold bearing material into the gold capturing machine. And if you haven't seen my previous videos on the bore box from Goldhog here, I was asked by the Goldhog people to do some sort of research and development, some product testing, if you will, of this machine as they were developing it. I gave them some suggestions, they made some tweaks, they took their sort of prototype and made this final production model that you see here. It will be available on Goldhog's website when this video comes out, end of October. But anyhow, uh, I was lucky enough to help develop this thing and I did a lot of testing along the way. I checked tailings, all that kind of stuff. If you want to see those videos, check back on my website. Today, we're just putting it to use in the field and seeing how well it does in a real world situation. Let's get going. So some initial thoughts after running for like five minutes, you know, 10 shovelfuls through. Uh, first thought, 
I need a bigger recirculating bin for sure. What's happening is the water's uh, falling into the bucket to catch all the tailings and then splashing out over the edge and I keep running out of water. I've had to go put, you know, a pan full of water in there about five times in like, you know, 10 shovelfuls because I keep running out of water. It's splashing out. So bigger recirculating bin is a must. Um, they did change the design so you can put a bucket underneath it now, which is nice. Um, yeah, my bucket's about three quarters full. It's probably time to, you know, take those tailings out, dump them and, you know, fill up my water again and get back to it. Shoveling into the top so far is quite easy. I am clearing by hand. So far, so good. I can guarantee you there's gold in there right now. Guaranteed. This is a little hard to do one-handed, holding camera. Seems like everything is harder to do one-handed. Poof. That was only half a bucket full. Anyhow, half a bucket of tailings on the ground. And then we'll go fill that back up with water and put it back in the system. There we go, bucket full of water, recirculating bin is full, and let's get going again. One problem you always have when you're recirculating muddy, dirty, you know, sticks in the water, leaves in the water, all that kind of stuff, is your jets start to get plugged up. And you have to go in there and rub them and get them flowing again. It always happens when you're recirculating. It might be time for me to switch out this muddy water. Oh yeah, I'm full. And if you're wondering why I have to recirculate my water like this, uh, here in BC, we're not allowed to get let muddy water make it back to the river. If the muddy water from our sluices make it back to the river, we're breaking the law. So in some places, we have to devise a way that we can recirculate our water so not much discharges to the ground because that stuff can run off to the river. So that's why I'm recirculating. It would be a lot easier to run this machine if you had clean water running through it all the time. Just, you know, using a gas pump, a one inch pump from the river or something like that. But unfortunately here, I can't do that. And one of the problems with recirculating, as I said, is you get sticks and debris into the pump. Sometimes your water bin gets low and it starts sucking air. Whatever it might be, you start losing water pressure, losing water volume. And when that happens, the reason I had to stop is I wasn't getting enough out of my spray bars here to run the machine properly and materials started to build up inside. So that's why I had to stop, get clean water. We'll start again. We'll let the clean water rinse that free and then we'll keep digging. Now, as I said before, I have done testing of the tailings of this machine and found nothing. It caught 100% of what I put through. But I'm gonna do again today. I'm gonna throw a pan under the tailings and see what gets through this next, you know, two or three shovelfuls. Somehow. <laughs> hmm. I'll figure it out. There we go. Had to take the bucket out to do it. Okay, gonna run two or three shovelfuls. Then I'll pan that out and see what made it through. Okay, well, let's see what's in the pan. What made it through the bore box in three shovelfuls? Now, I'm actually only 
actually here for a couple hours today. I'm on my way down. Uh, I chose this spot along the Fraser because it's along the way to Vancouver. And I'm on my way down to Vancouver with the family to go see a concert actually tonight. So I don't have all that much time. I'm gonna try to put at least a half hour I'm probably a half hour now into that machine. I'm gonna see if I can put an hour into the machine and see what I'll catch in an hour of running. But unfortunately, again, story of my life, I don't have all that much time. It is such a soggy day out here. My lenses are fogging up on my camera. Everything's wet. Let's hope there's no gold in here, or at least very little. Look at that, nothing. That's about as far in as I can zoom with this camera. It shows one extremely tiny dot in there. And of course, those people who know about testing equipment are saying to themselves right now, having nothing in the tailings doesn't mean anything. What if there's nothing in the box? So let's clean out the box once and see what half an hour in the box looks like. Six wing nuts, take off the front plate. Good to have a little magnet handy. Put the wing nuts on. If you don't like wing nuts, switch them out for regular nuts and you know, just use an impact or like a little driver machine, but you know, this is simple. And they did change the design since the initial, you know, beta prototype and the studs are now permanently fastened. So you don't have to worry about the bolts falling out when you're taking off the wing nuts. And there we go, looking inside the machine. There's a bit more material than I would like to see, but I have a feeling my battery wasn't fully charged. I'm not getting nearly as much water as I was at the beginning of the day. So I do have a second battery up in the truck I may have to go get uh, to get my second half hour run a little bit more of volume of water. But let's go check out what's in this run. And the mats come out very simply. A couple more wing nuts that are holding them down. You know, you make sure that they go on to the magnet so they don't go away on you and just up and out oops there we go up and out and then that goes into a pan or something where's my pan Ooh, a pan let's get some water in that pan and for curiosity's sake i am going to do the top mat by itself Swirl it around and see what's in it. Oh yeah, gold and lots of it. Lots and lots of gold. <laughs> now that's just a very quick clean of the top mat and only the top mat. There are seven of them I think in there, might be six. Six or seven mats in there. Of course, most of the gold will be caught in the top one and there's a very quick clean of the top mats. So yes, there is gold in the machine. And it's some nice looking gold. Okay, I'll clean up the second mat as well, but then I'll put the machine back together and go get that other battery. Second mat in the pan. Let's see what's in the second. And when I say that my battery is dead, don't think the machine can only run half an hour on a battery. Uh, that battery has been sitting on the floor of my garage for, you know, six years or something stupid like that. And I don't know how long it's been there. Uh, I put a charger on it last night, hoping that it was still working, but obviously not. Obviously it has toasted itself and it's time for a new little battery. Uh, I did bring a bigger battery with me. I just didn't want to carry the big battery down to the river because it's a lot of work but looks like I'm gonna have to. The second mat is a much more aggressive mat. It catches bigger things. So uh, the first mat is quite, you know, low profile. Will catch a lot of the little gold, but some of the bigger pieces might roll off it. The second mat is a very much more aggressive. Any bigger pieces will fall down into it for sure. But it also means there's a few more little rocks and stuff in the second mats. Let's see. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. That is some nice looking gold. Again, this is only the second mat. I've already sucked up the gold from the first mat. This is just the second mat and there are six or seven in the machine. Different profiles to give the gold, all sorts of different chances to fall into the mats and get captured. And after testing the tailings, 
I wasn't seeing any coming out the back end. Only took seconds to put the mats back in place. I didn't clear out the bottom ones. I'll get those at the end of the day. I did clear the top three. There wasn't much in the third one. It looks like the top two caught most everything. So yeah, I'm gonna put the plate back on and then go get my other battery. So for my second half hour run, I've moved up the bank. I'm gonna try to dig out there somewhat. I've changed my setup here. I'm not doing a bucket in bucket. I'm just discharging straight into the bucket. I'll make sure the pump stays above the gravel as I go. Not ideal, not ideal at all, but uh, I, I was just running out of water with that little tub. So bigger tub it is, bigger battery that's actually charged. Let's get to it. So things are definitely working much better with the bigger tub down there that's not losing water. Absolutely. Uh, the only problem is I had to clear the pump once. The pump uh, went down into the gravel and uh, plugged up. But I think for the future what I'll do is I'll just devise a better bucket and bucket system to make that system work better. That was just too small with the bucket. I could possibly, you know, figure out some way to put a bucket into this right now. Maybe, I'm not sure. That's working so much better. I'm running through the material so fast. This machine can take it really quickly, though I do still have to get in there with my hand and clear the gravel away. I really like the extra chute. It drops the gravel away from the bin so it's not falling in the bin. The hopper is a must. Uh, the chute and hopper, they're optional for this machine. I would say they're must-haves. Uh, it just makes working the machine so much easier. And yes, this second run here is going a lot better than the first. I was having way too much fee fun feeding material. I didn't realize that I had filled up my bucket with sand and that the pump was sitting in the sand. Uh, that is one risk of, you know, recirculating without a catch basin for the tailings is if you don't watch your pump very carefully, you can burn it out by having it buried in the sand. And you know, I didn't burn it out, but it was not good for it pumping sand like that. I really noticed it just in the last few seconds, the water coming out of here, you could see the sand being pumped back through it. So I shut it off real quick. You can see there's still stuff in the hopper because I didn't want to hurt my pump. <sighs> I'm exhausted. That was a good little run. That was like a 10th of the yard in half an hour there. Not bad at all. That's more than a 10th of a yard. Maybe one fifth of a yard in half an hour. This machine can take it. I was just going hard, shovel after shovel after shovel into it. And I don't know, I didn't test the ground beforehand to see what kind of gold was in there, but I have a feeling I'm gonna have some nice gold. Unfortunately, yes, it is loaded right now, overloaded because I was pumping sand through it at the last little bit. <sighs> Maybe I'll get a bucket of water and just run a little bit of clean water for a second. There we go, let's run a little bit of fresh through it. Uh-oh, they get down in the bucket. I need three hands. Oh, one, two, three. No. Well, that didn't last long. A little bit of clean water. A little bit of clean water. At least it cleaned the rocks in the hopper. Well, there we go. Second half hour. It wasn't a perfect stop, but let's see what the top two mats hold. There's the top mat. Mm. 
And if you're wondering about the mats, the Gold Hog mats use the, it's a UR mat for the top. Take that down to the river and pan it out. So that's the amount of material you get in that top mat. You can see it's mostly black sand. A little bit of uh, sand and gravel left in there just because, well, the way I shut down was not ideal. But let's see what we got for gold in the top mat. Whoa. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Oh yeah, gold. About the same as that first run. There we be. The top mat, very similar to the top mat the first run. And again, this is only half an hour, and this is only one of seven mats in the machine. Why do I think there's seven? Six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know, I'm counting from a distance. Okay, let's check it out. I got the top mats out already. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven mats in this thing. Take number two out right now. And I was kind of concerned that cleaning this thing up might be uh, time consuming and tedious, but it actually is really, really simple. Like, really simple. And mat two of the second run. Not as good as mat two of the first run. I really think I was actually on better ground that first time. Even though it was much harder digging, I think I was on better gold. And I think if I spent some time here actually identifying a better spot, I could do a whole lot better than this. Well, that's a lot of black sand left in there still. Let's see what there is for gold. Oh yeah, not bad. The bottom five mats had about as much as any one, like one of the top two mats. So there's still gold there, but not nearly as much as what I was getting in the top two mats, which is a good sign. It means those mats are doing what they're supposed to. Rainy day on the Fraser. Now let's see what one hour running the bar box on the Fraser looks like. Definitely would have liked to put in, you know, a six hour run or something, but just not in the cards today. Now, of course, I will be taking this home and cleaning it up properly, throwing it on the scale, weighing it in, you know, all that kind of stuff that you always have to do at the end of a gold panning video, gold mining video. But uh, right now, just giving you a look at the gold while I sit on the edge of the Fraser River. Not too shabby. So, some thoughts about the bore box after the first, the very first consumer run in the field. Yes, it's not available yet. It will be by the time this video comes out onto YouTube. But this is its first run by an actual user in the field. 
So some thoughts about that. If you're going to recirculate, make sure you put some thought into that tub system and the bucket in bucket. Make sure it's big enough to actually accommodate the volume of water and material you're gonna be running. That was a pain in the butt my first run, for sure. If you can run this thing without recirculating, discharging to the ground, pumping, you know, with a gas pump or an electric pump right from the river, that would be way better, way, way better. It really worked well. I tested the tailings again and there were no losses. It caught everything I put into it and you know, it was able to take the material fast and hard, me shoveling directly from the bank. So it worked very well. I don't know if it would replace a high banker for me because you know, a high banker, you can just ram material through so fast, but for a slower pace, uh, maybe somewhere where you don't have that huge volume to go through, it was a fantastic machine. Yes, every bit as good as the Gold Cube, I'd say even maybe a little bit better. Really easy to clean up if you are not a fan of wing nuts. There are a lot of wing nuts, but they were not a problem. And again, if you want to replace the wing nuts with regular nuts and just bring a nut driver, that would work as well. It was one of the biggest complaints I had on my earlier videos about the machine is the number of wing nuts it had. But I had no problem with those wing nuts. Definitely get the add-on extension and the flared hopper. Those, in my opinion, are an absolute must for this machine. I like it. Gold Hogs, A+. It works very well. Again, it will be available once this video is out on YouTube. And the guys at Gold Hog said they would give away one on my video. So there's a giveaway today. Leave a comment in the video saying Gold Hog. Anything with the words Gold Hog. I will do a search for Gold Hog. And if there's the words Gold Hog in the comment, I will put your name into winning one of these boar boxes. I like it. Hope you guys do too. I have a feeling my glasses are really muddy because everywhere I look, there's spots. And let's see what we have for gold. Hey, not too bad. Hey, not too bad. 0. 0.651 of a gram. Not bad at all. Nice, fine, Fraser River Gold. One hour of running the bore box, 0.65 grams. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription already, I hope I earned your subscription today. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Hurt Prospecting. And if you want to win that bar box, make sure you leave a comment below. Hope you're all having a great day. And until the next one.